Hello there, with Season 4 now just over a week away, let's take a look at what we can expect when the season goes live with a full dive into what's coming. I'm also going to include a short survival guide towards the end of the video, so do stay tuned for that. Apologies for any occasional changes in voice during this video, I'm currently recovering from a little bit of a head cold. So what is in Season 4? If you did Season 4 in Shadowlands, then this season's going to feel very familiar. As like with Shadowlands, it's basically a recap slash greatest hit season. But what does that actually mean for us? Let's start with the open world. The only change to the open world content is to the weekly aiding the accord quests in Valdraken. Gone is a requirement to gather 3000 reputation to be replaced with a new last hurrah quest, which will be rotating along with the raid rotation. More on that raid rotation later. These quests ask us to complete open world events which are related to the currently active raids factions. For the Dragon Isles, this is the Community Feast, a Centaur Hunt, and the Dragon Bane Keep Siege. For Zaralek Cavern, it's Researchers Under Fire, the Chest from the Farak Assault, and a Time Rift. And for the Emerald Dream, it will be Collect 100 Dream Surge, 50 Bloom from a Super Bloom, Complete the Super Bloom, and Plant 3 Seeds. Currently in the PTR, this has been on a weekly rotation. There was a somewhat ambiguous blue post that did imply that it could be a bi-weekly event instead, so this is a something that could be subject to change before it goes live. The new quest awards a piece of champion level gear, which is better than the current veteran level gear that's available from the open world. It also awards the new spark for crafted gear in Season 4. One interesting thing is that on the PTR, this was awarding a full spark so it may be that in season four we can expect to get one spark per week on the subject of rewards most things have been updated to the new season four gear levels with the item levels for veteran gear being 480 to 502 now there are a few inconsistencies on the ptr with these drops and my current thinking is that the increased item drops may be part of the weekly rotation meaning that some things will drop better gear in some weeks than in others but i think that's probably something we'll need to wait until all this goes live to find out but anyway the tldr on the loot front is that you can expect to see a 39 item level increase over season three gear rewards crafted gear sees that same 39 item level bump and requires new sparks and crests to craft but otherwise doesn't seem to have any major changes over on the raiding front, this is where we see the least changes PvE-wise. The three raids will be in a rotation called Awakened. Unlike the Shadowlands version, this doesn't come with any affixes. It's simply an increase in raid difficulty with an attendant increase in the item level drop. Champion level gear from the normal raid is 493 to 509, upgradable to 515. Hero gear from Heroic is 506 to 515, upgradable to 522. And Mythic from Mythic is 519 to 528. With the final boss giving 535 gear, the maximum upgrade level for the Mistrack gear is 528. The raid also gets a new mount, the Voyaging Wilderling, for completing all three roads on normal difficulty or above. It's in Mythic Plus that we see the biggest changes of this season, with the return of the eight Dragonflight dungeons, but they're going to feel substantially different as most have had some very significant nerfs, which combined with their better gearing will likely make this season feel a lot less punishing than you might expect given the pool. We also have a very significant number squish to Mythic Plus key levels. Put simply, Heroic dungeons now have a similar difficulty level to Mythic Zero, with the rewards boosted to 476 Adventurer for End of Dungeon and 489 Veteran from the Vault. Mythic Zero is now similar in difficulty to a Mythic Plus 10, but with no timer and it drops 493 Champion Gear from End of Dungeon and 506 Hero Level Gear from the Vault. For Mythic Plus itself, a Mythic Plus 2 will now be similar to a current Mythic Plus 12, and a Mythic Plus 10, similar to a current Mythic Plus 20, with rewards updated accordingly. The affixes have also been modified, now with all three affixes not kicking in until you do a Mythic Plus 10. Worms Crests will be dropping from Mythic Plus 2 to 5, and Aspects from Mythic 6 and upwards. 
A Mythic 7 and above will now drop Heroic Gear from the End of Dungeon, and Mythic Gear will drop from the Great Vault for Mythic Plus 8 and above, with the best gear dropping from a Mythic 10 and above. There's the usual Keystone Master Mount, the Infinite Armor Ridden, and if you still want the portals, these now only require timing a dungeon at Mythic Plus 10 or above. We also see the return of the Dinar system, now called Antique Gold Bullion. This offers weapons, trinkets, and a few other special items from a vendor starting at item level 493. This gear has its own independent upgrade track, with most items having 12 upgrade steps, with some rarer items upgrading in 14 steps. The 12th upgrade step takes you to item level 528, and the 14th to item level 535. We don't know a huge amount about this upgrade track currently. For example, if we use Cress or the new Billion as the upgrade currency, my personal guess is that it's more likely to be the Crests. We also don't really have any information in where the currency will come from. A couple of weeks ago, the weekend event quest in the PTR to do four Mythic Dungeons did offer two of the currency, but that disappeared with the reset, so I personally don't think that will be the main source. In Shadowlands, they were limited to a request that required killing 30 raid bosses, but this time around, as well as the gear items, there's a vendor with a load of transmog stuff and even the slime cap mount from Shadowlands Season 4 on it, which makes me think, given the amount that we'd be able to spend, that they might be a lot more readily available than was the case back there. PvP, of course, just gets the usual item level bumps and updated titles, along with a new Gladiator mount, the Draconic Gladiator Drake, and a Vicious Dream Talon mount. That's really all there is to it in terms of major changes for the new season, so let's get on to the survival guide. We don't currently have much official information about the logistics of the transition from Season 3 to Season 4, but based on my experience of past season's rollovers, here's my advice. On Day 1 of Season 4, the Great Vault will be rewarding gear based on the previous week's Season 3 activities. However, it's very likely that Flight Stones and Crests will be reset to zero and will only work for Season 4 in the future. That means that those items dropping from the vault probably won't be upgradable. So when planning out what you want to do in the last week of Season 3, it's worth taking into account if you'll even be able to get any upgrades from the vault, especially on your mains. In the past, the best advice for the last week of a season was to do the highest Mythic Plus key you could manage in order to get the best starter key for the following season that you could. But with the Mythic Plus squish this time, it's worth keeping in mind that a plus 2 is the lowest key it's possible for you to get. We don't yet know how much keys will decay in week 1 of the new season, but in the previous seasons it was 11 levels, which would mean that you would need to time a Mythic plus 24 before you could get a fresh key that was higher than a plus 2. Personally, I think the 11 level decay was a bit overcooked and with changes to affixes, they might decide to reduce this. I will put an update in the comments if they do announce something, but for now it's worth thinking if you even need to bother to do a key. My guess is that if you normally do a 16 above, it may be worth doing one just in case. Do keep in mind that this is just speculation on my part. The absolute safest thing to do is to just do that key anyway. Obviously, the likely upgrade currency resets mean that you should make sure to fully upgrade everything you can or want to before those currencies disappear on you. This also applies to the attendance tokens of merit, which usually also get to converted to gold at the start of a new season. Incidentally, that conversion also applies to any tokens that you take out of the vault in week one. That is, if you do select the tokens that week, you'll likely get gold instead of a token. With item levels being boosted by 39 levels, it's very likely that even for fully myth track geared mains, doing the open world events and the weekly final surge quest in week one of the new season will be worth it for a small boost before you start your raid or mythic plus campaigns. Of most interest are the dream surge and time rifts, thanks to the gear vendors offering deterministic gearing, 
something that's super useful for filling any gaps that you might still have hanging over from season three. The weekly time rift vendor can offer a minimum of 454 item level gear and the dream surge vendor offers 460 item level gear for the dream surge coalescence currency and 480 gear from the weekly quest. Now, do keep in mind that those item levels might be affected by the weekly rotation. So this could be a little bit different on live. Whether that stuff is really worth chasing will depend on your own personal playstyle. For Mythic Raiders, our folks wanted to push as high into Mythic Plus as they can in week one. The answer is probably yes, it is worth it. But for the rest of us, I think the right answer is to only really chase that stuff if you do have the time to spare in-game. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions or advice about Season 4, please do let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this guide useful, also let me and YouTube know by hitting that like icon. If you want to support my channel, the best way to do that is to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. There's going to be plenty more videos like this to come as we get ever closer to the release of the next expansion. That's all for now and I will see you all again soon.